So now we're going to be looking into gel shift arrays. And so gel shift array has a lot of different names. Um, there's one called EMSA, uh, band shift assay, just gel shift or just gel array. So it's not really too important what exactly the name is um, because you'll see from the diagrams exactly what we're going to be talking about. All right? um, so the MCAT is making somewhat of a shift towards experimental problems. So this is a very commonly tested uh, problem on the MCAT uh, because they're pretty tricky. They're pretty tricky. Um, so before we start actually talking about what it is, I just wanted to point out this graph. A lot of you guys probably will uh, remember this from labs or, or from class or your biochem class. So this is what we're going to be talking about. So now we're going to actually figure out how these work and what we can do with them. All right? So pretty much the point of these gel shift arrays are to identify DNA and protein interactions by size. So what do I mean by that? So if you have a bunch of different um, DNA molecules, each binding different size proteins or maybe dimerized proteins, right? You want to know, does this DNA bind protein A, protein B, or a dimer of protein A and B possibly, okay? And that's how we're going to be able to use these gel shift arrays to figure out what this DNA binds to, okay? Um, so the steps of this is, first off, we're always looking at some type of labeled DNA, okay? So it's a labeled DNA with a protein interaction, okay? So this labeled is usually um, radiation, but it can also be fluorescence, okay? So we'll look at the, the radiate, radiated labeled um, DNA. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be mixing these proteins um, and DNA in each of these columns. So each of these are gonna have a different reaction, right? So we said right here that in the first column, we have DNA. In the second one, we have DNA and also protein A. And in the third column, we have DNA plus protein B. Okay? And, we, and we see the next step is we put this through an autoradiograph. And pretty much what that does, um, it will identify exactly um, where these bands are. It will identify the bands because remember, we labeled this with this DNA molecule uh, with radiation. Okay? So it's going to get these little bands for it. Do we need to know how that exactly works or even this term that, that does it? No, we don't need to know that. What we actually need to know is how to identify these bands. So that's our last step, is identifying what all these bands even mean, all right? So we'll just talk about this one really quickly. So what happens in this situation, okay? Why do we have these bands at the bottom and bands somewhere in the middle and bands at the top? Do you think the bands at the bottom are gonna be light or gonna, or are they going to be heavy, right? Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be light on this side, heavy on this side? You know, what is it, all right? So the answer is, we can think of it like this. So this really is the answer. It's going to be light molecules on the bottom, so the size that are very small are going to be on the bottom, and heavy molecules or, or very bulky molecules are going to be at the top. And we can think of it like this. So what's actually in these gel shifts are, there, there's going to be polyacrylamide or agarose gel. So what exactly is that? We're going to think of it kind of um, just simulating what it kind of looks like, okay? This is just like a cartoon of what it may be. So it's just like all these, you know, it's like a cage, right? So it's a cage. And imagine if you have a small molecule, and we're going to just call this like, like a little mouse, right? So a little mouse can go all the way down. It can go all the way down, find the little holes, and pop down right there. And so that's going to be our DNA by itself. It's very, very small. It's like the mouse, right? Then we're going to have this gigantic elephant, right? So this gigantic elephant, imagine that's an elephant. How can it even get through here? You know, this cage, it can't go underneath. It can't go over. You know, it's going to get stuck. And we think of that like these DNA and protein interactions, right? Heavy molecules cannot go through these cages. Bulky molecules cannot go through these cages as quickly as this little mouse can. Right? So at the bottom, we're going to have very light, small molecules. At the top, it's going to be very heavy. So if you ever find yourself fig figuring out what, which one is it, just remember, can a mouse go easily through this or can an elephant go easily through this? Okay? So the, the mouse obviously can. Right? So now we're going to look at what do all these bands mean. And we're going to have three different examples and they're going to get progressively harder. So this one's example one. And for all these examples, we're not really going to have designated problems. We're kind of just going to see what are each of these bands? That's the main thing. If we can identify what each of these bands are and kind of what's going on in this situation, you can answer any question. Okay? Any question on the MCAT is going to be very, very simple if we can identify what even is going on. Right? That's obviously our first step. 
Okay, so this is example one. We'll notice that in every molecule or every column, and see, notice how I didn't draw it like the columns before, I didn't have those little jagged parts. We just assume that this is gonna be what it looks like, okay, because this is what actually comes out of the auto radiograph. We take a picture of it, right? So this is what we have, and we have DNA in every single one of the three columns, right? In the first one, we have no protein, no protein A, no protein B. In the second one, we have protein A, but no protein B. And in the third one, protein B, no protein A. All right? Pretty simple, right? So right off the bat, we know that this is light, and this is gonna be heavy up here. So this is probably gonna be what? These things all down the bottom. What do we have all of in every single column? We have DNA, right? So this is obviously gonna be just DNA on the bottom, right? These bands right here are DNA. So we have one down. All we need is that one, right? So now let's think about it. What could this possibly be? So we know that there's DNA, right? Because DNA, you know, there's, there's always gonna be a DNA and if there's a protein interaction, it'll have that as well, right? So this is gonna be our protein interaction of DNA plus A, right? Well, we don't have any B, so how could it be B? So it's pretty obvious that this has to be DNA and protein A. There's really nothing else it could possibly be, right? There's, there's nothing else in there. So we know that this band has to be DNA and protein A. Now this last one, well, why don't we see something here? Well, we don't have A in there, right? So there's no DNA plus protein A, but also B should be somewhere, right? How come there is no B? Well, the reason for that is, well, protein B didn't bind to DNA. So we can say that DNA plus B equals, does not equal an interaction, okay? So that's very useful for us. Seeing that there's no band here means that, well, B and DNA didn't bind together, okay? So that's very important and that's something that we need to note for sure, okay? So that's all we can say from this one. Pretty simple example, they'll get harder. So now this is example two, okay? So this one looks a little bit trickier. Now we have four columns, so it's a little bit harder, but still it should be very manageable, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is that little mouse and elephant thing. And this is, you know, it seems so stupid, like, well, it's obvious that light is down at the bottom and heavy is at the top. Uh, but the thing with the MCAT is, it's a very stressful test. It's always good to just write these out. It's always good to write very basic things that you think right now when you're practicing, uh, you know, in front of your computer or at home, you know, in the comfort of your home. It's very easy, right? But once you get that stress level and you get to the MCAT and the test, that you'll make very silly mistakes. So it's always good to just, while you're doing it at home, practice this, so light and heavy. You know, just writing these out is gonna help a lot for the MCAT. You, you'll find it very funny that, you know, you'll make such simple mistakes when you're so stressed, all right? So, once again, we have DNA in all these, all of these columns, right? So, same thing as last time, we know that this has to be the DNA band, all right? D radio labeled DNA, all right? So the next one, well, let's look at that. So we have a band here and we have a band here, right? So what is common in both of these? Okay, so we'll look at this one and we'll also look at this one, right? So we know that there's DNA in both of them. That's why we have these bottom bands right here. But what do they both have to make this band? Well, it's pretty obvious that the only thing else that could it, it could be is DNA and A, okay? So DNA and A is what it has, okay? Now let's look at the next one. What could this be? Well, it's possible that this could be DNA and protein B, right? Because there's a, a protein B right here. So we can just, you know, circle that on our test and, and move on with our life. We'll get it wrong. We'll get it wrong because, well, why did they give us this third column if we never used it? So it's obviously important, okay? So we think that this is just DNA um, plus protein B. But if we look at here, well here there's DNA and protein B, but I don't see a band right here. It's not that it's just, they probably would put a choice that, oh, we did a bad job when we set up the gel shift. Um, but that's not exactly the case, you know? There's one more possibility that it could be, right? We have DNA and A, DNA and B, or DNA by itself, but there's one more combination. This could be DNA and protein A and protein B, right? So in this case, we didn't have protein A, which is why we didn't have that top band right there. Right? All we had was DNA and protein B. So what can we say from this? We can say this. In order for B to bind to DNA, it is dependent on the presence of A. Okay? So there's a dependency. 
If it's just DNA and B, we will not have binding. But if we have DNA, B, and A, we will have binding, okay? So that's very important. The dependency of B on A is extremely important. It's extremely important and it'll definitely show up as a question. So the lesson learned for this one is, you can't just straight off the bat say, oh, um, the only thing that's left is gonna be DNA and B, so let's just say it's DNA and B. You have to look at every single case. And you know, it, it, it takes quite a bit of practice, but eventually it'll get very, very easy, all right? So final example, this one's gonna be quite a bit harder. So this is our final example in our gel shift array lecture, all right? Um, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is obviously the same thing that we've always been doing, label what's gonna be on the bottom and what's gonna be on top. So it's gonna be light on the bottom, heavy on the top, right? All right, so let's do the same type of thing. So the first example, we switch it up a little. Now we have all these proteins, but we don't have any radio labeled DNA. So this one was kind of thrown out there as kind of a trick. If they gave you this and asked you, they didn't give you the gel shift and they asked you how many bands would there be? You have to know right off the bat there's gonna be zero. There has to be zero bands here. Why? Because we have radio labeled DNA. Our audio radiograph is gonna detect only something with radiation, something that's radio labeled. And if the DNA is not present and it's the only thing that's radio labeled, we're not gonna see any bands, right? So this was kind of a trick, kind of, um, it's just you should know that because this is probably something that it's kind of like a trick question for the MCAT, right? So we got that one out of the way. That was just kind of to show you guys. Now onto the real stuff. So the first thing, first things first, what is this bottom band? This one's probably gonna be DNA if we have pus, plus, plus, plus in all of them and we have one, two, three, four. And the only thing that's present in the first column right here is just DNA. So it's gonna be DNA right there, right? So we'll move on to this guy right here. Okay, so what's present in this? DNA and also D. So we already covered the DNA right down there. So we know this one, we're just gonna assume that what else could it be, right? It's gotta be DNA and also D. There is no F in there, right? So it's gotta be some type of interaction that makes this complex bigger. Right, now onto the third one, right? Now we have DNA, D, and F. So we know that one interaction is just D by its, DNA by itself. There's one that's DNA and D. Then there's a couple other ones. So we could have DNA, D, and F, or we could have DNA and just F, right? But which one is which? I don't know yet, we don't know. But we still have one more column. Let's see if that can kind of resolve it, right? So in this one, we don't have D, right? We don't have D, which is why we don't have this DNA plus D. It's pretty obvious why we don't have a, a band there. But we also don't have a band up here. So what should that kind of be an indicator of? So we should be pretty confident that, you know, this interaction is probably gonna have to involve something with D, right? So it couldn't really be this because if it was DNA and F, right? DNA and F, we should have a band right there. Okay? We should have a band right here if this was DNA and F, but we don't, which means that in order for F to bind, protein D also has to be present. Okay? So we actually were able to tell a lot from just this simple graph. right? We were able to tell that F cannot bind DNA by itself, but D can. And we also learned that if we don't have any radio labeled DNA, that we're not gonna have anything show up, even if there's some type of protein DNA interaction. So even if D and DNA interact with each other, we're not gonna see anything because there's no radio labeled item, all right? So just get those things kind of straight. The one thing that we have to remember for the MCAT is that they're tending to shift more towards these experiment questions because they're pretty tricky. So know your gel shift array um, and hopefully this helped. If you like our videos, be sure to check out our website, mcatforme.com. The videos accompany our free MCAT course syllabus for a three-month study plan. We have the books you should use, the homeworks to do, videos to watch, and chapters to read. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll have new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Thank you.